Friends, hello again. Let's quickly talk about the risk of vaccines and how to look at these classes of risks. You don't have vaccines on the run. You're not doing it for entertainment or because uh, it puts you in a good mood. Vaccine versus COVID. And believe me, this is lethal. And the error is to use a precaution principle for one, not the other. Here we have a differential in precaution. And of course, in the beginning, I was leaning towards vaccines. I was lukewarm, warm, but not very warm. And with time, I got much warmer, seeing the effectiveness of vaccine in preventing infection, saving lives, but also in because of the sheer number of people vaccinated, we can make some inferences. The mistake, the traditional mistake is to think that, say if you have, this is time, you have exposure at time T0, and it takes 12 years to develop the disease, or 20 years, whatever it is, say the Hiroshima uh, uh, arrival of cancer, okay, that people think it's like a function, Dirac function at 12 years. That's what in people's minds. Uh, a lot of educated people, they think that way. The Kuru, 12 years. Hiroshima, well, look, that's in their mind what happened. So, of course, they're going to be worried about time, and that's justified when you have a small sample. But now what happens when you have a large sample? You have a distribution. So it takes 12 years for something to develop. You have a distribution, and that distribution has a tail. And when you have 8 billion people, that tail the first two years is going to be very visible. So we have a lot of information about vaccines, <laughs> what happens with time. Typically, vaccines have their distribution within six months, typically. But again, we know that we can exclude a lot of classes of events. And let me show you the shapes. This has got, got to be a gamma distribution, arrival time. Say for things that are carcinogenic, you need series of events to happen to take place. So it's within the same class, or very similar to the sum of gammas. But they all have the shape, either like this, typically front loaded, the tail at the end, or something like a bell shape. Okay. Uh, you may tell me, well, it takes a while for things to happen. Yes, it takes a while, but humans are not biologically equivalent. <laughs> and, and events uh, uh, don't take place in the same way. Uh, so you have sequences that can happen very fast. Say, for example, it takes a long time. If you go to a casino, you got to play for years before you win eight times in a row. But if you have eight billion people playing the casino, that will happen every day. <laughs> you see? So... This is how we can trade time for uh, sample size. So you have here that tail. You should be seeing something about vaccine. Keep an eye on it. So far, we haven't seen anything significant. Of course, uh, conspiracy theorists will tell you, well, they're hiding information. Okay, they're hiding information. But uh, maybe they're hiding information, okay? But they can't hide too much information. And uh, in my opinion, it's typically the reverse. People just get overexcited about, about small little... Uh, the effects they see that they attribute to the vaccine that may be coming from other things, like someone who dies after having an ice cream cone, uh, you know, is not usually, uh, uh, the, 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 the death is not usually attributed to the ice cream cone, but if you die after the vaccine, it would be attributed to the vaccine. Anyway, so, the, in short, you have a uh, distribution and that distribution can have a lot of shapes, okay? And for nothing to show here, the distribution is going to have a remarkably thin left tail. Possible, but so unlikely. If I take all the classes of distribution of harm that can happen with all the delays, that distribution is very, very unlikely. COVID is a real thing. So... I lean in favor of vaccine unconditionally. It's saving lives. Thank you for listening to me.